Let's now speak to the Conservative MP for Litchfield, Sir Michael Fabricant. And, and Michael, thank you so much for joining us. I suppose the one thing we can definitively comment on is what Sir Keir Starmer has said this morning. And he's accused your party of being divisive and declinist. Well, he would, wouldn't he, as someone famously once said in a trial to do with uh, sex and disgrace and uh, <laughs> Dr. Fever. But anyway, and I always like to get things in like that, you know, on GB News at lunchtime. I think it's important. Look, I said to a friend, if Keir Starmer actually starts talking again about the fact that his father was a toolmaker, that he is working class, and that he used to prosecute people as director of public prosecutions, I would scream. And I'll tell you what, I've been screaming around the house all morning. I mean, there was absolutely nothing said in the speech of any substance at all. It was all about what he would do and the wicked Tories, only what he would do was no detail whatsoever, nor how he would pay for it, as, in fact, Chris but Hope has already pointed out. The problem is, though, Michael, Keir, Sir Keir Starmer may not have uh, much charisma or, indeed, that much detail on his policy proposals, but unfortunately for the Conservative Party, Rishi Sunak isn't polling very well. It doesn't seem like the public have much trust in him as leader. So what is Rishi Sunak going to say today that was going to suddenly galvanise support that has been lost to Sir Keir Starmer? I don't know what he's going to say today. I'll be watching like you. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see. Oh, Michael, I thought you were going to give us, you know, some secrets. Well, I would like to claim that I've actually written this speech, but you know what? <laughs> I haven't. But, but you know, I, back to just Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak, you know, he was talking about all the sorts of things that the government has done. And it's completely untrue. Like, for example, he said, oh, the economy crashed under the Tories. We're actually the fastest growing, over the last 10 years anyway, the fastest growing economy in the G7. And while at the moment we're flatlining, uh, Germany is in very, very deep recession. And Europe has actually, as the mm. EU, for a zone, they're in recession too. So, Michael, the... Michael, I'm afraid I'm going to have to issue a slight oh, correction. Oh. You're correct that the UK of the last 10 years was the fastest growing major European G7 economy, but the United States has grown faster. Not over the 10 years. You know, the terrible thing about going on GB News is dealing with Tom Harwood. He is such a nerd. <laughs> Yes, we do know that, Michael. Well, it's, it's, it's... He's a very charming nerd, though. <laughs> it, 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 is, it is slightly irritating, though, because so often we have this sort of slightly myopic view of oh, who's doing the best in Europe. Mm. And we're all talking about 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, whereas the United States of America is... Is, is far ahead on sort of 4%, 5% growth. Yes, it's and Michael, different league. this has a lot to do with uh, energy costs, which are still far it too is. high in this say. in this country. So Keir Starmer, he has this idea, billions to in, borrow to invest in uh, green tech and the like, and also, you know, a new GB energy company. Has he Is he coming up with more solutions than the current government? When you started to say GB, I saw Tom look at you and thinking, God, is GB News going to die? <laughs> di Nationalised. Di <laughs> into petrol pumps or something. <laughs> but look, uh, you're absolutely right, by the way, about the US in that they're energy sufficient. And they do fracking and all the rest of it. When we talk about fracking, everyone says, no, we don't want fracking. Um, look. Including within your party, Michael. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, actually, to be honest with you, I was all for fracking. You know, I've got a sort of uh, engineering background. But when you're talking about digging deeper than Mount Everest is high, all the talk about, um, you know, earthquake, mm. uh, contaminated water level just doesn't apply. But anyway, now I know I'm going to get 10,000 letters from people all <laughs> saying bloody hell fabricants talking about fracking again. But anyway, uh. that's beside the point. Look, what is the point is that they're energy sufficient. And I haven't heard anything from Starmer about how he's going to make the UK energy sufficient. It's just talk, talk, talk. Mm. And absolutely no detail at all. But then I guess, because he's uh, so many points ahead in the polls, he thinks he can get away with it. 
Well, well, we'll so, see. Michael, I think I think I think Sakir Starmer. I suppose you're both knighted. This is this is fun. Um, okay. but, um, <laughs> but Sakir Starmer might say to that, well, we've got this 28 billion pound spending plan. We're going to uh, use all of that to make loads of clean green energy. Although I suppose that's slightly undermined by what he just told Christopher Hope in that if it doesn't fit in the fiscal rules, they won't do it. Yeah, not much of a plan, really. Well, I remember when Tony Blair came in in 1997 and he was stymied for the first few years because he said he would stick to the same spending plans as the Conservatives. And that rather restricted what he did. Mm. We might well see ourselves in a very similar situation after the next oh, election. But, so. uh, but for now, uh, Michael Fabricant, thank you so much for joining us here on GB News. Always good to talk. Always good to chat to Sir Michael Fabricant.